Okay, welcome to the video. So this video is very important to the vlog. Uh, I'm sitting actually outside of the YMCA. Just got, got done finish swimming. Um, got my tongue twisted there a little bit. Uh, just an easy swim. It's a taper week. It's race week. But I did want to definitely bring to you real quick, probably 10, 11 minute video from start to finish about Ironman Hain City 70.3, which is in a few days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days. So three days and a wake up. So let's get to the video. Uh, welcome to the video. And like I said, we're gonna just run you through the race this week's video is going to be many, many crucial details about Iron Man Hain City 70.3. Starting from when you wake up in the morning on race day to when you cross the finish line. And one little thing after you cross the finish line, I'll explain that to you. It's pretty easy or before get your family involved and I'll share that with you at the end. So, Sunday morning, Jan, oh, December 10th, Sunday, 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 Sunday morning. We will get up about 4.30, 4 o'clock, 4.30, depends on, you know, how I feel and, you know, how I can um, get to sleep you know, and enough time in the evening prior, which will be Saturday night. But with the wake up, so I'll get up at 4.30, throw your tri suit on, throw a sweater on. It's typically cooler in the mornings on race morning, especially in December in Florida. You're probably looking in the 60s 55, um, probably no wind, no gust. So it'll be just a cool 55, 60 tops. High is gonna be 80. So you're gonna get tri suit on, sweater on, check your boxes, make sure you got everything loaded and ready to go. Uh, your bike will already be there. You just gotta make sure you have your gear to put around your bike. Okay, so. They will open transition about five o'clock to 6.30. Gives you an hour and a half. So I will get there probably about 5.30, if I leave about 4.30. Gives me about an hour to get there and gives me about 30 to 45 minutes. Cause you don't want a lot of downtime. You don't wanna get there at four o'clock in the morning and be up and anxious. You wanna sleep as long as you can and then get on the road, get some breakfast in you, get your vitamins in you. Uh, sunblock is a must. Make sure you have some spray for chafing or a dry stick um, for chafing. Make sure you put all that on. I put it on at the house and that way it's done and over with. Sunblock, chafing, put it on. It'll be there throughout the day. Your wetsuit won't, won't rub it off, trust me. You don't wanna be trying to get uh, sunblock when you're transitioning. It, it's a pain, trust me. And then you get on your hands, get in your eyes. Just a, just a bad situation. So once you get everything set up on your bike area your prep area so to speak in transition um this will not be a clean transition this will be a transition where iron man accepts things on the ground around the bike so you will have your tennis shoes your socks for your tennis shoes you will have your bike shoes you will have your socks for your bike shoes you will have a run cap or run visor you will have, of course, your goggles should be on your noggin and your swim cap should be on your noggin with your number. Um, they haven't really been saying a whole lot about uh, the number on your left calf and your um, race chip on your right leg. So it doesn't, you know, um, hit anything. They want it on the right side and then they want your race number on your right arm. So I don't know if they're pushing that or if just the full 
they're not pushing that anymore. I don't I haven't read up on the USAT rules about that. I just do it just to comply because I've done it in races in the past. I have my own tri tats, so I use those myself. I get my number usually the evening before, and you can have a family do it pretty quick. And they're ten bucks for a pack, and they last you for probably twenty races. So moving on. So you got everything set up around your bike. Everything's there. Do not take everything. Just take the very necessity needed items. Don't overdo it. So, you got everything around your bike. You're ready to go. Your bike's racked. Pressure's checked. About 6.30 when they close transition, go ahead and head to the swim. Because you definitely want to check your seated time and see where you're going to be at. Now your seated time is a recorded time for your swim. It's an honor system. They'll have two to four waves. And what I mean by waves is you'll have two to four athletes at one time going in the water. They wanna have everybody in the water within probably 10 to 11 minutes. So I go to the front. I like the front because people are not real honest with their seated times. And I'm usually end up passing a lot of people that just have a bad swim or just not as fast as they say they are. I don't know what the case may be. And I also, too, have shoes on the whole time with my wetsuit on. I got a feeling it's going to be wetsuit legal because we've had some cold snaps. So wetsuit legal, most likely, haven't confirmed it, but have my tennis shoes on, waiting around 20 minutes, and then I walk over to the finish, and they have a medical table there, and I'll put my shoes on the medical table, then that way when I get out of the water, I can put my shoes on, and then I can run to the transition, through the transition, to my bike, wetsuit off, tennis shoes off, bike shoes on, bike unracked, helmet on, snap before you take it out of the gate, and then you're ready to go. But backing up to the swim. My strategy for the swim is about 40 minutes. I definitely want to stay on the outside. It's a little bit more, sometimes 40 to 46 minutes because I swim a little bit longer because I go a little bit outside of the pack so I don't get trampled and crushed and blah, blah, blah. You go out, come back in, cut over, go back out, cut back in, cut over. It's an M for Iron Man or a pair of pants, whatever you think it looks like. I think it looks like a pair of pants. So, run out of the swim, like I said, get the transition, jump on your bike, take your bike to the mount line. The bike mount line, you have to go to the bike mount line, and then once you get to the bike mount line, get on your bike, take off. Think of volunteer. Now, it is one loop of 56 miles after the 1.2 mile swim. So 40 minutes on the swim, three hours on the bike at about 17 to 18 miles an hour. Just a good steady pace. There is a few hills, they're not terrible. So just be ready. And there could be a headwind on the way back. Going out, the wind will be on your back, but coming back in, you will have a headwind depending on how early you get back in. The headwind starts about 11 to 11.30. And like I said, I'm gonna definitely get this posted tonight, so hopefully somebody can see this. I'm gonna tag it on Iron Man 70.3 hashtag, so maybe if you have Instagram and you're kind of looking to see what's going on, you can go to this video. I will link it in Instagram, and I'll also link it in YouTube. That way you can look at it. All right, so you've got the 56 mile bike done. There'll be probably three or four transition, I'm sorry, three or four aid stations to stop at. I don't stop, I try to just keep it moving. It's a short race, 56 miles, it's not terrible. Bring your nutrition with you, nutrition is huge. Bring your nutrition with you, because you gotta have it. You need about, I don't know, 40 grams of carbohydrates every hour. So I'm doing a gel every hour, I'm doing a bar. Um, probably just do a, a bar within the three hours just so I got something on my stomach um, and doing a gel every hour so three gels one bar keep that sodium in me and plenty of, of water endurance Gatorade 
and I'll probably drink whatever they have on the course, which is probably endurance Gatorade. Now, coming back in, there is a steep hill. You're gonna be flying down this hill. Now, I do wanna back up a second. One part of the track of the race is on a main road, and it's by a mine, uh, some kind of clay or coal mine or something. They're mining something. And it the road is just horrible, horrible, horrible. So be very careful. You can lose a water bottle. You can lose a water ca a bottle cage. You can lose, be careful. It's like rough railroad tracks. So once you get past that, home stretch. So you're going down the hill, you're going about 35 miles an hour, and then before you know it, you gotta turn left to go back into transition to drop your bike off. Now once you drop your bike off, hook it. They don't have a bike catcher. So you gotta hook your bike, bike shoes off. Hopefully you got a tri suit on so you can just keep that on all day. And same sunglasses hat on, visor on, bottle of water, whatever you're gonna hydrate with, and hopefully gels in a pack that you can carry with you. Okay, now you're out of transition, you're running. There's two loops of 6.2, so a total of 13 miles. Uh, so 13 miles, two loops. When you start out, there's gonna be a hill. I call it Heartbreak Hill. It's not terrible, but you'll get out of the parking lot. It's about a mile and you're gonna hit this hill and you're gonna start out and you're gonna be heading to a neighborhood. Once you get to the first neighborhood, you'll go through two or three, maybe four or five turns. Then you go down this long road to the last neighborhood and then they bring you back. Like I said, it's a little over six miles. It's not terrible and you'll do that twice. So remember, hydrate aid stations like every mile it seems like probably not every mile but every few miles i know there's one when you first start out so just get your goodies they got red bull coke plenty of ice lots of ice at the aid stations um gels if but like i said use what you've been training with do not use their gels unless you use that product because you will be sorry you'll be on the toilet and you will have a a very um negative race and then you're gonna be finished, but before you're finished, you get to pass the finish line and do one more loop of a little over six miles. And then you get to come back in to the finish line. And you know, because when you get close to the finish line the first time, you can hear the music. And then the second time you come around, you know you're done because the music's there. And you can see this lake on your right, the one you swim in, you'll see it and you'll go down this little side street and you'll see the barriers and then you go in and guess what? You are an Ironman. So I'm gonna get this posted really quick, Lee, as soon as I get home. I don't wanna post it and drive. I'm actually doing this in my car so I can get this footage out here. It's been on my mind, it's been on my heart and I want someone to be successful in this race, maybe place for Kona, uh, 70.3, something, place your age group, whatever. We all got goals, we gotta face them. Mine is 40 minutes on the swim, three hours on the bike, and a sub two uh, half marathon. So thank you for watching the video, and race weekend is uh, among us, so we're definitely gonna get on here and take you through that whole process, and then we will have a post-race following up next week. So after this video, two more videos, and that will finish up this vlog. And then I got something on the books. I'm working on it. And I will definitely keep you posted and updated on my journey, whatever that prep looks like. I'll bring you along. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in a few days. I will see you at the race.